oil sands project, Derek Wong for his edu environmental education project, and Jalen Hewlett for his stewardship of Alberta's native rangelands project. And the Emerald Award, along with the $5,000 cash prize supported by ConocoPhillips Canada, goes to Kelsey Miller Anderson. Well, my project was basically to develop a new method of remediation that could treat the tailing ponds that are created in the Alberta oil sands region. Based on previous research that I started when I was 15, I looked at using mushrooms as a source of remediation. Normally mushrooms, um, they're decomposers, that's what their role in the ecosystem is. So the specific type of mushroom that I used is an oyster mushroom. And normally oyster mushrooms, they're wood degrading fungi. So they're breaking down uh, the carbon bonds in such and wood. So basically what I believe is happening when it's remediating, uh, especially the hydrocarbons, is I believe that it's breaking the bonds and the chemical structure um, to a point where there's smaller components that the mycelium, which is the vegetative part of the mushroom, can then absorb it and use it as fungal sugars for its growth. They fruited a lot, so they were getting all of that in the process of remediating uh, the tailings. There hasn't been a lot of research done into it. My project is actually one of the first. All my research right now is focused specifically on the tailing ponds, but it has the potential to be applied to other contaminated sites across Canada and around the world. You know, first of all, I, I'd just like to thank everyone who's really helped me along the way, uh, whether it be my parents or uh, organizations like Syncrude and Alberta Innovates or uh, the Calgary Science Fair and things like that, uh, who were really able to give me uh, access to the things that I needed to pursue this crazy idea. Uh, well, like, I mean, if you think about it, how often do you get a 15-year-old kid approaching a big company and saying, hey, you know, I've thought about it, and I have the answer to your problem. <laughs> so, and I mean, that's kind of what I did, right? So, um, I owe it all to everyone who's really helped me. Um, and I can say that June 6th, uh, 2013, will be a day I'll never forget. Um, actually, this morning, um, I was honored with a top 20 under 20 award. So, and then right off the plane, literally, uh, I got off the plane around uh, 5 o'clock today, so from Toronto. But um, you know, I, it's the Emerald Awards too, I'd like to thank them, because an organization like this who, they're not just looking at one type of environmental action, they're really recognizing everything, whether it be a nonprofit or research or things like that, and it's not, it doesn't have to be necessarily on a large scale, um, it can be individuals, it can be youth, but it can still be large businesses and corporations. You know, I think it's important to be recognizing uh, the environmental action and the environmental excellence that's happening on all different levels throughout our province. So thank you for that and thanks again. And thank you to Kelsey for teaching us as new parents that sometimes it's okay for teenagers to experiment with mushrooms. It can be a positive thing. <laughs> They're not those kind of mushrooms, honey. Anywho, up next is a special category for the Emerald Awards relating to topics of current importance to the well-being of Alberta's environment. They are issues that present many, often difficult challenges and require inspired environmental leadership. And this year, the award will focus on a new theme, water. And so to launch it with the proper level of a plume, here are spoken word wizards, Terence Harding, uh, uh, oh, sorry, here is um, one spoken word art artist, <laughs> Terence Harding, with a piece called I Can't Live Without This. So I'm talking to my friend Jeff, who admittedly isn't the sharpest knife in the drawer. And he asked me what I'm up to. I tell him I'm writing a piece for the Emerald Awards. He asked me what that is. So long story short, I tell him it's about the environment. Cool, he says. I'm all for supporting the environment. Really, I say? 
because he sounds like he's rooting for our hockey team, not really doing anything at all. I'm not sure he has any idea about the need for environmental protection. I decide to see how clued in he actually is. So tell me, Jeff, what is it that you couldn't live without? Easy answer, he says. I really couldn't live without my iPhone. It has some really cool apps, pictures of my kids, and all my music on it. I'd really miss it if I didn't have it. Not the answer that I was expecting or wanting. Think a little harder. What is it that you need to survive? Well, I need a job, he says. And I really wouldn't like to live without my TV remote. Not being able to make it makes me crazy. Or my car. I love my car. Don't think I could live without that either. Not quite what I was thinking, I say. Actually, the thing you need the most you already carry around with you all the time. My wallet, he says. No, you carry it inside you. Uh, my heart, my brain, my skeleton. No, it's water. Did you know that 60% of you is water? And you have to replenish it every day so that it stays at that level? Even if you're only 1% dehydrated, it can affect your health. I don't tell them that it also impairs brain function, and maybe more water might be a good idea. <laughs> no way, he says. Way, I say. Good thing there's lots and lots of it to go around. Well, actually, there isn't, I say. It's always there when I turn on the tap, he says. It's there when I shower and when I flush. It's always there and has always been there. So I think you might be wrong. A teachable moment, I think. There's lots of water, but only a little of it is fit to drink. If you put all the world's water into an 18-liter container, only four teaspoons of it would be drinkable. No way, he says. Way, I say. And did you know it would take 23 billion liters of water to meet the daily requirements of the 4.7 billion people in the world? I did not know that, he says. And did you know that is the same amount of water we use on golf courses each day? And did you know that if we don't change our ways, one day we are going to hit a big-time water shortage? So if we get rid of all the golf courses, we'll solve the problem, he says? No, I say, just using it as an example of how we use water. If we don't change our ways, you and me, agriculture, industry, we might just find that our taps are running dry and the thing we need most has disappeared. Wow, he says. I guess water is pretty precious. Who would have thunk it? At least 500 people, I say. To present the inaugural Emerald Water Challenge Award, please welcome John Remmer, Group, Land in, group Lead, Environmental Policy and Canna, and also a member of the Nine Judge Panel for this year's Emerald Awards. And the inaugural Emerald Challenge Award for Water goes to Shirley Pickering for her years of work with the Old Man Watershed Council. Congratulations. The Old Man Watershed extends all the way from the mountain ranges down past uh, Lethbridge. It's a large watershed and issues there are primarily water shortage. All of our precipitation occurs mainly in the mountain area and that's mainly as snow. It recharges groundwater and it provides surface flow. And right now the main focus on the, on the Old Man watershed is the uh, headwaters and how that's being managed because some 80 to 90 percent of the water source comes from up in mountainous areas. One of the things that we found is the biggest impactor is what we call fragmentation and mainly due to linear disturbances, which are roads, trails, pipelines, 
all of those kinds of things which disconnect uh, parts of the watershed. Our council is made up of multiple stakeholders. And so that is very difficult because everybody has their own perception. We need to recognize the value of our watersheds and particularly we need to support the activities that is going to better inform us about our watershed and how to manage it. Wow, <laughs> this is uh, pretty nice. Uh, I just want to say I'm a real strong supporter of engaging youth, so I'm sorry you're not up here too. <laughs> Uh, I guess uh, I just want to say that uh, we need to really recognize that we do have valuable watersheds and uh, that water is a really precious resource as we've just heard. And it is very important that we come down to the ground and work with, uh, with the people on the ground and uh, change the way we think about how water is managed. And uh, across this province, from way up in the Peace River with Sherry Larson and her group, down to Diana Andrews in Mosquito Creek in the southern region of, of the Old Man Water Council are all kinds of stewardship groups working across this province to, uh, to be able to improve on the ground what our way of using the watershed. In addition, a very valuable component that has come about as a result of Water for Life, a strategy that the government has put forward, has been the formation of the watershed councils in the main watersheds. And their work tied in with the stewardship work is very key in improving how, ground, how water both ground and surface water and the health of our watersheds will move forward and their continued support is very important. I just want to say as a, as a person who has been involved across uh, with both communities, municipalities, and with government and with landowners that there's a huge number of people out there willing to collaborate and to work together, and that is something that needs to be supported. Thank you. Five, six, seven. Do the hustle. All right. <laughs> These are just things we have, actually, in our basement. I own this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wore this you, for you a do. time. You do. You own Serious, it, baby. I seriously. Yeah, I own it. I, I want this. I want to talk when I'm in this suit. I'm gonna. I'm gonna but not when we introduce the next award. No, 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 no. no, no. <clears throat> the next award recognizes all levels of government, crown corporations, public institutions, agencies, boards, etc., that demonstrate an ongoing commitment to the environment and exceed normal practice or statutory duties in the category of government institution. And to present this award, please welcome Lucinda Choden, Editor-in-Chief at the Edmonton Journal. Good evening. This is the first year that the Journal and our sister publication, the Calgary Herald, have partnered with the Emerald Foundation to spread the word about the Emerald Awards. Over the last five weeks, it's been our great privilege to share some of the inspiring stories that we've heard tonight uh, with our readers in print, online, and various other platforms. And we're really excited for Saturday when we'll be celebrating all of the winners in both the Herald and the Journal. Tonight, it's my great honor to present the award for government and institute, government institution. The finalists are Office of Sustainability, University of Alberta, City of Edmonton Corporate Properties Branch for the Legacy Point in La Perle to Secondary Suites Project, and Envi Alberta Environment and Sustainable Resource Development for Alberta's Wet Areas Mapping Initiative. And the award goes to Alberta Environment and Sustainable Resource Development for Alberta's Wet Areas Mapping Initiative. Alberta
Britons face unprecedented challenges in terms of managing our natural landscapes, partly due to ever-increasing populations and ever-increasing demands for our natural resources. One of the challenges that we have is that many of the hydrological features on our landscape, the very small water channels, it may only be 10 centimeters in width, are typically unmapped in Alberta. We also don't have really good information as to where saturated soils might be on the landscape that might be very sensitive to disturbance. So simply put, if you don't know where many of these hydrological or soil risks are on the landscape, you can't mitigate the, these risk factors up front in a planning process. We embarked on what has now become a nine-year research journey to develop what is known as wet areas mapping. And this initiative takes advantage of very high quality remote sensing data to develop information data sets of very high resolution and quality that show us where water is on the landscape and where it's not. So the data today is shared with um, all of the forestry companies in Alberta, uh, many of the energy companies. It's also shared with uh, Alberta universities and as of uh, January of this year went public and the demand has, has exceeded our capacity and able to produce a product. Here I am now with Barry from ERSD. Now Barry, congratulations on the award. Tell me, uh, what does it mean to you to be recognized? Uh, tonight is really a, a terrific um, a privilege to be recognized for a lot of the hard work that our, that our uh, partners in the university have been doing since uh, uh, 2004. It's involved a lot of graduate students, a lot of hard work in the field, and uh, so to be recognized after that amount of work is, is really terrific. What does it mean for the future? Because this is such a great tool that's going to really change the face of mapping. It's a really good question because we started this in 2004 and we never really knew where it was going to take us. Mm -hmm. uh, nine years later, we've, we've mapped close to 18 million hectares. Wow. And we would normally think at the end of a, a long research trial like that, it would be wrapping up. Well, the opposite is true. Um, it is now becoming an innovation platform on itself and other researchers now at different universities are coming on board and building on this data set. So in reality, uh, we're now seeing people working in biodiversity, reclamation, wildlife, etc. cetera. Um, Just keeps going. There is no end in sight. <laughs> that is a good thing. Thank you very much and congratulations on thanks behalf of your much. team. Thanks, enjoy the rest of your evening. Okay, thanks. This evening's next honor is known as the Emerald Certified Shared Footprints Award, established by Alberta Sustainable Resources and presented by Encana. This award recognizes projects that demonstrate excellence in integrated land management and will be presented by Sarah Koski, Government Relations Advisor in Canna. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that it's great to be here tonight showcasing all of the amazing work that's happening right here in Alberta. Um, the nominees for the Emerald Certified Shared, Put Shared Footprints Award are Canada's Oil Sands Innovation Alliance for the Landscape Ecological Assessment and Planning, or LEAP, and Algar Restoration Pilot Project, and the Montane Elk Project. And the winner is the Montane Elk Project. The Montane Elk Project was started as a way of looking at how industry was impacting elk movement and habitat selection in southwestern Alberta and from that far more research has come out of it looking at predator-prey interactions when industry puts down a well pad. They have roads and they have to have industry vehicles get to those well pads. Elk and especially grizzly bears have been shown to be really sensitive to roads. Um, and they will move off if there's more than, say, about 12 cars a day. When you build a gate, it's just a metal gate with a key, but it states that it's a restricted access road. And if those gates are respected, then it's limiting the access to that small area. Conservation is not keeping everything the same. That's preservation. Conservation is working with what human activities need to do and what human activities do do. And there's bigger questions that have come out of it, but it's all really come down to that primary question of what um, Shell really wanted to ask, which is how are we impacting them and how are roads impacting them? And so roads can be a really big problem, but they're something that are always going to be there. We'd like to uh, dedicate this award to the memory of our friend and colleague, Roger Creasy, who started the project seven years ago. 
Uh, Roger died of a, of a heart attack a few months ago, but uh, would have uh, loved to have been here to uh, celebrate the success of this, this very simple but very effective program for access management, allowing industry to coexist with some of our, our key wildlife species, including grizzly bears and elk. Thank you very much. Tonight's final award honors individual achievement. This category recognizes individuals committed to protecting the environment through personal initiative and or within and through the organizations with which they work. To present this award, please welcome the chair of the Alberta Emeralds Foundation's Board of Directors, Patricia Leeson. Good evening. Individual Commitment. The finalists for the Emerald Award for Individual Commitment are Lonnie Balby, QC, for Bike to Work Day, Michael J. Mappen for the University of Calgary Biogeoscience Institute Experiential Education Programs, Dory Rossiter for her Enviro Project, and Nikki Heck for her Avian Protection Plan. And the Emerald Award goes to who does it go to? The first award is presented to Michael J. Mappen. At the very beginning was to provide an experience in the out of doors. As a teacher prior to that, I was involved in environmental education. And the best part of it was just getting the students outside. And so when I was given the opportunity to do that in 88, I, I jumped at it. So I was brought in and I was given a year to develop a program and make it viable and plan out to make sure that it's sustainable. And I think we've met that goal. There isn't anything that can replace the authentic experience in the field whether it's students in the field, in a river for the first time in their lives, to teachers interacting with scientists on one-on-one. -on -one. Um, for me, that's been one of the most powerful experiences, watching that interaction. The teachers then, as learners, you know, they take off their teacher's hat, they become learners all over again, and they get really excited about that. And the research